James Coleridge from Bella Deleteria. So he started off in Vancouver making gelato down on Cordova and Burr about two and a half, about three years ago. People come knocking to his door from all over the world wanting him to open up all over the world. But I think he spent more time on airplanes in the past month than I've ever seen. He's been all over the world talking about his gelato, trying to open, doing deals, all sorts of stuff. So I think there's a lot to, a lot to hear from him and a lot to come from him in the next little while. So please join me in welcoming James College. Thank you very much. Well, first off, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight. Uh, it's a privilege for me to be one of many of the distinguished speakers here tonight. So again, thank you, Richard, for doing this. Yes, I make gelato, but I'm not going to talk about gelato tonight. A lot of you might have questions about what's the difference between ice cream and gelato, or can you make it without sugar? And I'm not going to talk a lot about that. What I'm going to talk about is about what you do with your time. You know, there's 86,400 seconds for 1,440 minutes for 24 hours in every day. It is truly a choice of what you do with your time. We all have literally the same amount of time. It's what you do with that time that really distinguishes you. So really, I have 24 hours like the rest of you. I might have a lot of energy, but at the end of the day, it's what I do with that time. I did go to school, the Italian Culinary Institute of Italy. I did graduate from a culinary university in Gelato. I took a master's in chocolate and alcohol infusion in Italy. And I took a number of years preparing to come to Vancouver. And it was the basis of the fact that I grew up on cheap ice cream. I did, I ate a lot of bad ice cream in my life. And it wasn't until I discovered gelato that I knew that I could create a passion around something. And passion was the one thing, for those of you in business, think that you might own something as a business, but really at the end of the day, yes, Richard's right. Um, we have uh, people from Dubai or Manila, uh, Shanghai, everyone talks about us in Vancouver. Recently, the European Union just launched uh, official gelato day in, in uh, European Union, and they announced France and Spain and Germany and Italy, and then they mentioned Canada. I don't know how we fit in with the EU, but the footprint that we've made in Vancouver here was a result of you, actually. Because in many ways, what we do is we believe in a slow food movement. We believe in fresh versus industrial. In fact, when you come to our place, it's a completely different experience. We chose Vancouver because it has the most gelaterias per capita than anywhere in North America, more than New York, more than Dallas. So when you as a business person decide to come into an area, you go, why are you different? How are you different? Well, you can buy the equipment. You can come into my place and many people around the world have come in and taken pictures and videos of my place and they can recreate that. But the one thing they can't recreate and the most beautiful gift in the world and the one thing you do own is you. You can't repeat that. You can't copy it. It's you. It's that passion that takes you beyond. I'm a, I'm a professional mountain climber by trade. I've been to the top of North America, South America, Africa, and Europe. And in Argentina, for example, I was sitting at the bottom of Aconcagua, the highest mountain in South America, the highest mountain outside of the Himalayas in the world. And I had a young man look at the top and he said, I hope I get there. You will never get to the top of a mountain if you hope. You have to drag, you have to dig, dig down inside yourself beyond everything because when you climb mountains, when the weather says no, when your body says no, and the mountain's trying to get rid of you, there's one thing that takes you beyond and puts you one step further up that mountain, and that's the passion. That's the one unique thing you have that's different from everyone else. So you do have to put your passion into your business. For us, we have a simple thing that we do in Italy, and as much as, you know, I did win the Florence Lotto Festival in Italy, I was voted number one by the people of Italy, uh, and Vanity Fair did say that it was a slap in the face to all Italians and a wake-up call to all Italians, but of course he was trained in Italy. So I was appreciative of that. <laughs> so at the end of the day, as much as if you come into our shop, you'll see a lot of places, Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine, write about what I do here in Vancouver. Uh, I'll tell you exactly what I'm about. This is not about me because I'm merely a custodian of an old world process, protecting it against an industrialized world. Think about that for a second. An old world process. In the gelato industry, I learned very quickly that you can make gelato in 18 minutes. In fact, bless the Germans, they can make it in nine. <laughs> but why would you do that when you can take four hours? 
to cook down your milk and simmer it and infuse your flavors. This is not about how fast you make things. This is about how beautiful it is. We always say in the gelato industry, when you see a pretty gelato, and if it tastes bad, it will always taste bad. But if you don't see it during a great gelato, and it tastes great, it will always taste great. It's not about what it looks like. So I made a really tough decision here in Vancouver. I decided not to show my gelato. You don't even get to see it, because I don't care how pretty it is, because it's not about pretty. I don't want to put jams on it and fruits and plastic things in there, because I'm just trying to appeal to your sugar side. Sparklers? No, I don't do that either. Italian Bruschi, a friend of mine, Italian champion, and yes, I was the, the sorryful Canadian who literally got on the phone and called the Italian champion, the chocolate champions, Italian champions from Canada, and I said, hi, my name's Shane, I'm in Vancouver. I like to make a lot of can I come clean your floors? So I went to Italy and I cleaned their floors. I hung around with the best of the best in Italy who became friends. And when I won the championships in Italy, they became even better friends. <laughs> so for me, it was about what do you do with your time? We make a conscious choice in all of our food industries in terms of what we want to do. We have the same amount of time. You have 86,400 seconds in your day, just like I have in my day. It's what you do with that time. That's what you're blessed with with your choices. And for us in the gelato industry, we chose to do it the old way. We don't open bags or powders. In fact, as a student in the Culinary Institute, they would show you to make gelato in nine minutes and they'd tear open a bag. And they'd say, trust the bag, everyone uses it. And I'd be in the back go, what's in the bag? They go, don't worry, everybody uses it. Maybe I didn't ask that right. What's in the bag? They didn't tell me what was in the bag. So at night, I'd go through the garbages. I'd go through those bags and I'd cut out the back of the ingredient list and I'd go in there and next morning I'd come in and I'd go, what's monobicness, right? What's carotene? Do I really need Santan in this? And what's the last word on that bag that says flavors? <laughs> Seriously, ours makes a flavor. So in the gelato industry in North America, for the most part, um, and again, this doesn't make us right or them wrong. It's about choices. It just makes us us. So I figured out how to make that bag. For those of you in business, the people in the gelato industry in the world, they buy that bag at one peel for $8. Well, I'm sitting there looking at that bag, I'm going, I'll get rid of all the bad stuff, and I can make it for two. So I cut my cost in tremendously because I didn't want to use all the X, Y's, and Z's that filled up a scrap of work. So at the end of the day, it was about me and what to do with my time. In our industry, and if you follow our tweets, I will make gelato literally up to 27, 28 hours straight. I won't take a break. I'll keep making it through because we're at capacity. Our lineups are uh, up 2,000 people a day, an hour and a half lineup. We're the third busiest gelato in the world right now. Um, I just recently uh, was nominated for the top gelato master worldwide. Um, and again, it's because Vancouver created this. Yes, Vancouver is a home where we encourage fresh. We know what organic is, the difference between farm salmon and fresh salmon. We know the difference. So at the end of the day, it is about choices. It's what you do with your time. Yes, you can make gelato in nine minutes, but you can also take four hours making the same flavor. It's the same ingredients. So it's at the end of the day, it's that passion that separates you from everyone else. It's really a question of what you do with your time. I make gelato 19 hours a day, and people say that's a lot. It's not at all. It's fun. Where else can you stand there for 19 hours and people come in and tell you they love you all day? They come in happy, they leave happier. What a tough situation, please tell me more. <coughs> so at the end of the day, find your passion. There's a great law called Pareto's Law, 80-20. And for the most part in business, there's 80% of your customers who will give you 20% of your business. Well, I want to take that Pareto's Law and let it be your time. Take 80% of your time, do what you do now. Stick to it, pay your bills, go to your job. But 20%, play. Go screw up. Go make a mistake. Mistakes are good. Remember when kids were like this tall? They made mistakes too, they fell on their face, they eventually walked. Making mistakes is a great thing. Take 20% of your time and play. Screw up, make mistakes. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay not to be perfect. You do not have to be perfect. Find that passion in your life, whatever it is. If it's the food, or it's crafts, or it's photography, dedicate 20% for playing. Too often we get caught in our day and we just get through day after day and day after day. 
and we forget to learn how to live. Uh -huh. I work in a world of gelato. I play all day. I literally come in people are happy all the time. So for me, 19 hours a day, I'm okay with it. I like that. I'm okay with it. So again, it comes back to what do you do at that time? Remember, you have 86,400 seconds a day, 1,440 minutes or 24 hours a day. We all get the same amount of time. I have not been able to beat that formula. Cloning is another thing I'm working on, but I can't fix that either yet. Um, so at the end of the day, we get the same time. What, it's not the amount of time you have, it's what you do with the time you're given. We're all given the same amount of time. Make that choice, go screw up. Take that 20%, follow that passion. And out of this whole room, I hope that this message touches one of your souls. Because you know what, at the end of the day, you will do what I did. We've opened here two and a half years ago in Vancouver. Yes, I won the Florence Gelato Festival. Yes, I was the first person in the world to compete in four national titles. Yes, I was chosen number one in Italy. Yes, I was named the top gelatoria worldwide by Australia. We've been open two and a half years. Now I'm going to tell you about time. You know when I started this? Three and a half years ago. August 29th, 2009, I sent an email. I wanted to learn how to make gelato. It's not how much time you have. It's what you do with your time. I chose to be the best in the world. Luckily, I got there. <laughs>